This is the fourth lesson from the first unit in which we talk about the concept of continuity, which is something that we, you know, have a sort of intuitive or general idea about already, but, you know, haven't really looked at in a technical way. And today we're going to sort of connect the dots here with how do you actually define continuity beyond just, you know, a graph that has no jumps or breaks. I mean, this is this is an okay working definition to describe to someone, but mathematically it's not, you know, it's not precise enough, right? So a function being continuous, uh, we are going to talk about a function being continuous at a specific point. Uh, and if we can prove that the function is continuous at every point, it is continuous everywhere, right? Uh, a graph that is not continuous at a certain point uh, has a break of some kind. Right? So something unusual is happening uh, at that spot. Uh, a hole, a jump, an asymptote, uh, you know, uh, something in, in along those lines. Now continuity, this is the important thing here for the technical. And again, when I say this, uh, this is what I'm expecting when I ask you in the communication section to show me whether something is continuous. A function is continuous at an interior point. So remember, interior simply means not the edge of the domain. A function is continuous if the following two criteria are met. f of a must be defined and the limit of f of x as x approaches a must equal f of a, must equal that y value that the function is. Now, the, at an end point, a function is continuous if its limit from whatever side is, is equal to the end point. And, and this is, uh, you know, this, this goes hand in hand with what we talked about earlier. When you're at an end point, you can't check both sides of the limit, so you just say you're checking one side, and that's sufficient, right? You, because you can't check the limit as a, x approaches a from the left, for example. If your function starts here and ends here, this this particular point will have no limit as a approaches, excuse me, as x approaches a from the left of f of x will not exist, right? Because you can't come at it from the left, you can only come at it from the right. And that's all this is saying here. So just that the limit, uh, when you are talking about an end point, you only need to show that one side of the limit uh, is okay, is the same as the value of the function at that point. So let's just look at a couple of uh, examples and we'll sort of start to explore how this works. So it says, test the continuity of each of the following functions at x equals negative 2. Now on this particular function, you can see there's a point here, and there, you know, it, it is a point in a long sequence of values. If you approach it from the right, or if you approach it from the left, both sides, uh, you know, approach the same value. They both uh, converge on the same value. And so we would say the limit here as x approaches negative 2 of f of x is simply equal to 1, right? Uh, you know, it's a point and there's nothing special going on. Here, the left side approaches here. The, uh, sorry, I'm still thinking of this in terms of limits. Also, f of negative 2 is also 1. So, sorry. So we've shown that the limit is there, and we've also shown that the point is there. Since both of these things are true, and both of these things are equal, this function is continuous at x equals negative 2. So that's, that's the logic there. We found the limit, we showed that the function has the same value as the limit, and therefore the, the graph is continuous. Now on this side, the limit is no problem. The limit as x approaches negative 2 of f of x on this side is 2. Uh, coming at it from the left is 2, coming at it from the right is 2. However, f of negative 2 itself is down here at negative 3. And so we would say this graph is discontinuous, or more precisely, not continuous at x equals negative 2. Okay? Uh, and and the, the logic there is, yes, there is a limit, and the limit's fine, but the function does not have the same value as the limit. 
and that alerts us to a discontinuity, i.e. a hole or a jump or a uh, 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 an asymptote or whatever, right? Some, some, some sort of discontinuity there that's preventing the, uh, the continuity test from being passed. Okay, so basically, uh, if it's a standard, you know, stretch of a function with no unusual behavior, you are going to find it is continuous because every limit will exist and every limit will be equal to the value of the function at that point. If there is a hole in the graph, as in this one, right, uh, you will, if there's a hole, it's guaranteed not to be continuous because even if, you know, if the hole is down here, if the, excuse me, if the function is down here, obviously they don't line up. If there is no point, but just a hole, then f of negative 2 would be undefined, the limit would not be the same as the function, and therefore it would not be continuous at that spot. Okay, so if it fails this condition, then it's not continuous, and that's, that's, uh, that's it, right? So state the values of x for which the given functions are continuous, right? Uh, well, okay. This is a this is a, uh, uh, a polynomial, and for polynomials, we already know a couple of things. We know f of a is never undefined. We know that the limit as x approaches a of f of x is always. Uh, uh, sorry, I shouldn't say is always. Let's just say always exists. And these functions are continuous everywhere, right? That and uh, you know we we sort of looked at a demonstration of this before, but we can we can do another one now. If we make up a, a parabola, like okay, well let's we can make up the one that they actually gave us. So x cubed plus three x plus one. Okay. Now I'm going to draw a point. And let's just compress this so we got more function to work with. And I'm going to say limit of f if we were to sub in the x value from the a point. And of course, the number that I get is the same number as the y value uh, of the point. Now let's take the y value of the point and subtract the limit. As you'll see, no matter where I put this point, the y value is always the exact same as the limit. And therefore, this graph and all other polynomials like it have the condition that they are continuous for all values. Right? For x, so what we would say here, just to again give the answer, x is any real number uh, would be your solution here. So remember this little belongs to symbol. Uh, any real number, it would be continuous. Now, on the next question, right, uh, 1 over x minus 1. So let's change the function here. So 1 over x minus 1. Uh, and this time, let's just change this a little bit too. So we go, uh, like, be a little more. This point is going to be. Uh, OK, so I don't need to compress it anymore. So here I, again, I've got a function. And I've got this little slider here that's going to control where my point is. And you can see that once again, the y value of the point and the limit are identical, which is summarized by this subtraction here, where we subtract the y value from the limit. You can see that no matter where I go, this holds true except one place, right? And that place is right here. When t is equal to 1. When t is equal to 1, there is no limit and there is no value. So of course they are not equal to each other because they are both undefined. Undefined things are not equal, by the way. Uh, if, if two things are undefined, you don't say they're equal. Uh, uh, something that's undefined cannot be equal to anything, right? Uh, and you know you check any other point on here, 
And indeed, you know, every point has the exact same limit as it has a value. What's the summary here? If the denominator function, which I'm just going to call d of x equals 0, then f of x is undefined and therefore and therefore not continuous. Remember, in order for the you know, a uh, 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 the, the, the test here, right? What is the test? It has to be defined and the limit has to be equal to the value, right? Those are the two conditions. So if f of a is not defined, it's automatically not continuous immediately. You, you just show that. You know that if, if this were a whole, the limit would still be there, but that doesn't change whether something is continuous, because remember, if it's not defined, it's, it's not continuous. It fails, the con it fails the test, right? Now the last one is uh, straightforward. It's just square root x minus 2. So you see it's that root and it's moved over by 2. Uh, again, everywhere you would want to look, this function is, uh, you know, continuous. Uh, now, of course, it, it can't be continuous where it doesn't exist. So we'll, let's just take it right back to 2. At 2, it's fine. At 1.99, obviously, it's not because there's no function there, right? But all the way up until 2 and including 2, it is okay. So a root function is continuous for all values in its domain. In this case, we would say x is any real number given that x is greater than or equal to 2. And again, here we would say, sorry, I didn't answer this, x is any real number given that x is not 1. As long as x is not 1, it is, uh, it is continuous. Now, uh, so again, state the values for which the function is continuous. This one is continuous at every real number. This one's continuous at every real number except 1. This is continuous at every real number bigger than or equal to 2. Right? And that would be uh, how you'd answer that one. So roots, all continuous in the domain. Polynomials, continuous everywhere. Rationals are continuous everywhere except where the denominator is 0. And whether the denominator makes a whole or makes an asymptote doesn't matter. Both are not continuous. Okay? Let's try uh, 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 some more examples. Here it says, find the values of x for which the given functions are discontinuous. Discontinuous this time. I'm supposed to give the areas where the function is not continuous. So uh, you can see in this case there are two such places. x equals 1. The limit as x approaches 1 of f of x does not exist. And therefore, it cannot be equal to f of 1. Right? Remember, if something doesn't exist, it, it can't be equal to something else. So uh, the, the condition for showing a limit is that f of 1, which is here, by the way, it's here and it's negative 4, has to be equal to the limit. But the limit doesn't exist. And if you had to show why the limit doesn't exist, you would just say limit as x approaches 1 from the left equals negative 4 of f. The limit as x approaches 1 from the right of f is positive 4. And of course, they don't line up, and so the limit doesn't exist. The exact same argument would be made here. Uh, x equals 3. It's discontinuous. Again, f of a, f of 3 exists, so it passes the first condition. It does not pass the second condition, because the limit does not equal f of a. There, There is no limit to be equal to f of a here. So it's discontinuous here, and it's discontinuous here. Everywhere else, it's fine, right? It's continuous along this stretch, it's continuous along this stretch, and it's continuous along this stretch. But it is not continuous at this particular value, nor at that particular value, right? So your final answer here, x equals 1, x equals 3. Those are the two ones. The, the argument for x equals 3 is the same argument as here. I'm, I'm not going to write it out again, but you, you get the idea. You just show that the limit doesn't exist. Here, you would say it's discontinuous at x equals 0 since f of 0 does not exist. f of 0 is undefined. Remember, the first condition of being continuous is that the thing exists. If it doesn't exist, it's over, right? Uh, here, 
right? Again, I don't. The numerator has no bearing on this. It does not. It, for for testing continuity, the numerator has no uh, no impact. The denominator is important though. So let's write dx for denominator, and x and x minus three. Now I can clearly see that when x is zero or when x is three, f of x is undefined. If f of x is undefined, it's automatically discontinuous. There would be no other reason, so at x equals 3, x equals 0. There would be no other reason on that graph for another area of it to be discontinuous, right? And we can, we can show that, just do a quick picture of it. So f of x equals x squared plus 8. Sorry, I've got to put that in a bracket. over x squared minus 3x okay now again if you look at my uh, if you look at the graph here as if t is 0 you have a problem but if t is any other value right my limit check versus my number check uh, always shows that the, the 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 y value is the limit right at 0 that fails and again that fails at 3 right but any other place, right, at 3 it fails as well. But after 3 it's fine, in between them it's fine, and before 0 it's fine, right? And so everywhere else is okay. Again, we'll just look at this one and we'll say the same thing. f of 2 is undefined, right? And, uh, uh, you know, it, it, f of 2 is actually indeterminate, right? It's 0 over 0. But remember, so if you are finding a limit, let, let maybe let, let me draw it and I'll show I'll show the difference. Okay, uh, two makes the function undefined. So let let's draw it again. So this time uh, it's x squared take away x plus two uh, over x minus two. Okay. Uh, No, sorry, it isn't indeterminate. I'm glad I graphed this. Because 4 take away 2 plus 2 is not 0. Sorry, I thought it was take away 2. If the top had been uh, take away 2, then it would be indeterminate, right? But again, so let's just go with this example for a sec. Let, let's say the question was a bit different for a minute. Even in this example, when t becomes 2, right, and I check 2, it still isn't something that I can say uh, is... Uh, continuous because yes there's a limit there right limit f f2 exists then it's you know it's it's at 2 3 but the function itself is not there at 3 and because the limit and the function are not equal we can't say that that it's continuous now again in the way the question was asked which is like this it's more obvious because it's not actually, it's not even indeterminate, it's just an asymptote and you know, there are any number of reasons it fails the continuity test because of an asymptote. It's not defined and there is no limit, right? It fails both parts. So this is obviously not continuous either. But even if it had been a whole, it still would not be uh, continuous, okay? And that's, uh, that's what's going on there. Um, Okay, so that's just some examples there about checking if things are continuous. Now, many times uh, you will be asked about a, a, a piecewise function and is it continuous. Now, when we were doing the limits one, primarily we were interested in the joints. But understand what this question is asking. This question is asking, is the function continuous which, which means, is it continuous for all values? So let's, let's draw a number line with all values on it and work this out. If x is less than 2, then my, my function is x squared. I know x squared is continuous because x squared is a polynomial. If the, the graph is greater than 2, and I know it says equal, but I'm just, just trust me with greater for a second. If it's greater than 2, it's a polynomial, it's a linear, and I know a polynomial is continuous everywhere. So I have just shown that the graph is continuous from negative infinity up until 2, and then from 2 
until infinity. What I need to do now is make sure it's actually continuous at 2. How would I check that? I'd want to know the limit as x approaches 2 from the right and the limit as x approaches 2 from the left and then I'd want to know, I'd want to check that against f of 2. Now f of 2 um, it, it would come from this definition because this is where it says x uh, greater than or equal to 2. If I plug in 2 I get 0, right? So that's where the function actually is at that point. Uh, the limit as x approaches 2 from the right, right? Th this would be, uh, the second one would be x approaching 2 from the right, the first one would be x approaching 2 from the left, right? Because we're on the left side of it with the x squared, we're on the right side of it with the x minus 2. So from the left we are approaching the value 0. You just plug in the 2 into here and get the answer. Uh, from the right, if you plug in 2, you get the number 4. And this makes us realize that this graph, which looks roughly speaking like this, right, uh, is, is not continuous. Right? Remember, if something is continuous, that means it's continuous everywhere. So even if there's one discontinuity only, you say this function is not continuous. So let's say this function is not continuous since uh, lim x approaches 2 of f of x does not exist. Uh, it is, and, and, and it is therefore discontinuous discontinuous at x equals 2. Okay, So again, if you're asked, is a function continuous, the, the, what that question is asking you is, is it continuous at every single value? Right? And the answer is, well, find out. Check if, it, check if it's, you know, uh, if there's any values where your test would, would fail. Right? And if there's even a single value where the test fails, the function is not continuous, then you just state where. Okay. Oops. Okay. So it's just a little bit left on this one, and then we'll we will be done. It's a couple more uh, um, piecewise functions to check, and then we'll go over. We'll just summarize a bit of it at the end. Okay. Graph the function of f of x and determine if it's continuous everywhere. Well. Again, up until the number 3, the function is x minus 1. That is continuous. It's a polynomial. After 3, it's 5 minus x. That is continuous. Right? Uh, the limit as x approaches uh, 3 from the left of f of x, remember that would be this one. So this is x approaches 3 from the left. This is x approaches 3 from the right. So we sub into the top one, we get 3 take away 1, which is 2. We go to the, the bottom one, lim x approaches 3 from the right, and we take 3 and sub it into here, 5 take away uh, 3 is also 2. Now the function exists at 3, because f of 3 is 5, uh, sorry, f of 3 is not 5, sorry, f of 3 is 2, and both sided limits exist and also point to 2 so everything here is good it's continuous at this number in the middle it's continuous in this region and it's continuous in that region which means it's continuous or you could say it's continuous uh, at all values right but, but they mean the same thing if you say a functions continuous I will take that to mean it's continuous everywhere what does this graph look like well uh, x minus 1 is a straight line with a slope of 1 that does this. And 5 minus x is a straight line with a slope like that. right? So something like this. Uh, obviously the, the two parts that are lines are fine. And the only question we have is you know, about the joint. And the joint is correct in this case, right? that they, that ha they happen to line up and meet. We're going to do one more of these. Okay. Before the number 2, this function is continuous. 
in between the number 2 and 4, this function is a, it's a constant, right? It's just constantly equal to 2. Uh, but that's continuous. There's no gap in that. And uh, after that, it's equal to 3. So it's continuous along those regions. Now, I actually don't even need to do anything for this question because if you look closely, you'll see x is defined at 2 but is not actually defined at 4, right? f of 4 is undefined because both of the, both of the um, you know, uh, definitions here don't actually include what's happening at 4. This one tells you what's happening before 4. This one tells you what's happening after 4. And clearly, they're not, you know, they don't line up. So, for this one, 4 has definitely failed. Uh, even if it did say equal to, by the way, uh, it would still fail because you can see it's jumping from 2 immediately to 3 like with with no uh, and the two limits are not going to agree right because it's saying do the value 2 and then switch it to the value 3 immediately you just jump up and that we know that doesn't work for continuity um, so determine if the function is continuous everywhere it's not right uh, the, the answer is no uh, it's it's so it's not continuous at x equals 4 now just for sake of argument uh, when x is 2, we should check to see if it's continuous. If the question was worded exactly as it's worded here, then you're actually done when you say this, because you found you found a single point where it wasn't continuous, and you've proven that the statement's false. But let, let's say the question said, determine if, the, if it's continuous and show everywhere that it is not continuous, right? So we've shown it's not continuous at 4. Uh, but before that, it actually is going to be okay, right? Because the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of f of x is 2, and the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of f of x is also 2. So these two actually line up, and this one is fine. This one at 4 is not fine, right? So here's the problem. This part's discontinuous, but the first part's fine, right? The first joint is, is fine. Now, uh, in summary, let's summarize. All polynomial functions are continuous for any value you ever plug into them. So polynomials, you see how I was like going through these different sections of the number line? I never really had to do any work in any of those because they were all polynomials, and their polynomials, I know, are fine. If you got a rational function as part of your piecewise function, you would have to be careful that g of x was never equal to 0. So a rational function is continuous everywhere as long as g of as long as g of that particular value is not 0, right? So again, I usually like to define this as n over d, a numerator function over a denominator function, and the denominator cannot be 0. That's all. Right? Other than that, it is it is uh, continuous. Uh, a rational function could have a VA or could have a whole, but it doesn't matter for this particular type of work because both of them are discontinuous. When one-sided limits are not equal, the limit is uh, the, the function is obviously not continuous because if it doesn't have a limit, it can't be continuous, right? So that's it. Just summarizing. Okay, so that concludes your lesson on uh, continuity. Make sure you review this one and make sure you know this test. And I want to be able to see that this test, you know, it's simple, but it has to be done this way, right? I don't want to see an answer that says, well, there's a jump here, so it's not continuous, right? I am looking for it to be presented in a particular way. It should be presented this way. Show, either show that f of a is not defined or show that the limit is not the same as f of a. If, if, you, can do, if you do either of those things, you've shown that something is not continuous. If you, if you can't do those things, right, if you, if you in fact show that the limit is there and that the limit's the same as the value, you've shown that it is continuous at that particular value.